The Toyota Sports Desk. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. To help with social distancing, some of our WCCO co-workers are working from home. That includes Norman Seawright tonight, who has your look at sports. Liz, right now, people's entertainment choices might be changing. Obviously, without live sports, you might turn to podcasts or audiobooks. Chris Hockey is a radio personality and, of course, a musician. He wrote a book called Possibilities Line in Chalk, and then he turned it into an audiobook. It outlines growing up in the Midwest as a football-obsessed kid. It's mostly fictionalized, but it's based on his life. We talked about that earlier this week. It just seemed like the perfect time to release an audiobook when people are looking for content. Maybe they find uh, a little solace in going back in time to the early 1980s. Well, I guess, what was the general feel when you talk about growing up uh, in the Midwest like that? What was that like? If you know anything about the old television show, The Wonder Years, it really was that. I didn't realize it at the time, but the biggest danger was a real one, um, and that was mom and dad getting laid off from the factory they worked at each winter time when uh, the factories went dark. So there was a time in my life when the most important thing uh, the most nerve-wracking thing was winning an eighth grade football game. When we're looking at obviously all the sports cancellations now, like we're at a point where uh, I think people are kind of hungry for that in a way, you know, understanding um, the passion, the, com uh, the competitiveness, and uh, just the way that it fits into people's lives. You know, when I talk to uh, uh, Minnesota Vikings players, one of the questions I always like to ask them is, has anything, even if you want a Super Bowl, has anything ever measured up to Friday Night Lights, almost across the board, every one of them have said, nothing will ever live up to that because it's the one part of your life when you're not playing because it's your job. You're literally playing because you love your school, you love your friends, you probably love your coach, and you want to represent the town you grew up in. When it comes to translating a book from, from the written word now to, to an audiobook format, what is that process like? What was it like for you personally? It's been not very easy. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, uh, th this version that people are hearing is the second time me reading it all the way through. So I had to scrap the whole thing and start all over and really take my time explaining it so that I didn't inundate people with too much information. We're in a kind of a time of crisis and, and, and people, I guess, are longing for a bit more of the uh, the simple, what kind of what they remember. And you know what else? I wish it was more relatable. I wish that um, for my daughter, who's 17, and my son, who's 25 now, and living in Seattle of all places, which is uh, a whole thing into itself, but none of these characters in the early 1980s have cell phones. They do have a video game system, but it's a really early one, and it's not the biggest part of their lives, you know? Um, what a, um, a pleasure it was to grow up at a time when every mistake you made wasn't broadcast to every person across the world immediately. I hope that when people listen to the book, they're able to kind of go away, not only inside the story, but to a time when you didn't have to be worried about every little misstep you made. That'll be released on the KFAN website, two chapters at a time.